The data tooling landscape has literally exploded in recent years. Just look at this. I've been working in data for over a decade and even I cannot tell always the difference between some of these company names and Pokemon. So when you start to build your data stack, I get it. It can be hard to huh? figure out what do you need to stitch together just to get simple things working. Whether it's a Python pipeline or a SQL pipeline connecting to a database, you would typically need three things, a runtime environment, an orchestration, which at minimum includes a scheduler and some basic monitoring. And there is a joke that data engineers are often just YAML engineers. And today that couldn't be more accurate. So you can achieve all of this with just one YAML file in your existing GitHub repository using GitHub action for free. Yes, I know it literally sounds like a scam, but it isn't. So in this video, I'll show you two of my open source projects that successfully use this stack. I'll discuss also what are the limitations of such a setup. But in the meantime, let's YAML the YAML file. What the hell am I doing here? So CICD for data pipeline, really? So GitHub Action is primarily a tool for CICD pipeline. And yes, well, if you work in data, you're probably familiar with data orchestrators. One popular is Airflow. And these tools provide an environment where you can define workflows, DAGs, and connect to a runtime with built in monitoring. While data orchestrators are the perfect fit for data pipelines, CICD tools have evolved far beyond the original school. And finally, we can now say goodbye to the horrible groovy language and Jenkins pipeline still give me nightmares. So initially CICD pipelines are built for simple jobs that are tied to Git process, but now they have for more functionality. Take Argo, for example. It was designed for CI-CD pipelines, but it's now widely used by a company for complex data pipeline. In fact, it's even referred as an orchestrators, showing how much overlap it exists between these tools. And while I don't think traditional CI-CD tools are the best option for data pipeline, their extended features allow for decent slight ray pipelines at a much lower cost and with less complexity. And fun facts, some data orchestrators are actually now being used for CI-CD tools, but that's for another story. So now that we have accepted the possibility of using a CI-CD pipeline, let's just move on and get on to the code. So the first project I'm gonna show is called DuckDB Extension Raider. It's on GitHub, but by the way, this strategy is kind of like similar if you're using GitLab or Bitbucket. The idea is to use basically the CI-CD pipeline that is provided natively within your Git environment. So this simple project actually search for DuckDB extension over GitHub. So what it does, so you have the pipeline here, which is a simple Python file. We use the GitHub API to look for a certain type of file extension and get information about the repository, uh, how much stars it has, when it was uh, last updated, and just provide it into a nice uh, table that is directly rendered in Markdown on the readme. So if you go on this readme, you see that you have the last refresh, which is actually the last run of the data pipeline. And you have the list of those DuckDB extension repository uh, that are there. I love this act because I suck at front end and actually this uh, kind of projects, I don't even need to build the front end. I just display it as a markdown within the GitHub repository. Anyway, that's all about the project. So it's a Python pipeline. Let's go into the workflow. So all the GitHub action are under GitHub slash workflows. And the thing here is pretty simple. I give uh, a cron schedule. So it's run every day at midnight. I set up some dependency in Python. Here I'm using Python 3.10. I haven't updated the project for a while. And it's used also poetry. Yes, I know I could be using UV. Don't tell me that. Don't tell me that in the comments. Don't you dare. And basically I commit the change and push it to uh, the readme. That's all about it. If I go to action, I can see all the workflow execution. And uh, as you can see, it's just a one step uh, job. Really, it cannot be more easier than that. It's free, it's just a YAML file and my pipeline is scheduled and run. And you know what else is easy and done? Clicking on the like button and the subscribe if you already got value from this video. And if you didn't like the video so far, well, just stop and share that video to an enemy. <laughs> All right, moving on to the second project. Yes, I like to highlight the star so that you can go there and also give me a star. It's a bit more complex setup. So just
just to give a context, uh, this project is actually the one which is live on duckdbstats.com. And what it does, it gets a PyPI uh, download statistic for the DuckDB uh, Python project. And so we ingest those data and then we do some transformation, aggregation and compute our daily statistic uh, to be able to render uh, this dashboard. So this dashboard is updated daily. And if I go back to the code, the difference here is that instead of using directly the runtime of GitHub Action, I'm actually using a Docker container and you can see it's actually also deployed uh, on GitHub. So if I go to the GitHub action workflow, I have one uh, for build and publish the Docker image every time I merge to main and one for uh, the pipeline, which is ingestion and transformation. So quickly here, you see already that I have uh, different things. I still have a crown job, which is here, but I have various variable inputs that enable me to have parameterized pipeline. And the most importantly is that I run these pipelines always against a time window because the data set can be actually really large. And also I do incremental loads. So I always want to process only the current dates as of today and yesterday, that's the time window. And you see that in terms of jobs to run, I have uh, different jobs that I can uh, run, ingest, transform, and update is just to update to Modernduck, that's a separate topic, I'm not going to go into that. By the way, if you're interested to go into deep dive of this project, I have a couple of videos that are listed in the readme. Anyway, going back over there, I can actually pick to run either a step, one step of the ingestion or either just the transform or either all of it. And then I pass the start date and the end date. And if I don't provide anything, those dates will be uh, calculated in the first steps, which is basically the date of today uh, up to yesterday. And so another thing uh, interesting here is that, as I said, I use a Docker image. And so I have a make file and this make command with the Docker set to true said that I'm gonna run actually the pipeline, ingestion pipeline within a Docker container. So this make command basically run uh, a Docker run command. All right, so if I go to uh, the workflow execution, if I click on one, you can see I have a different step, the ingest, the transformation, and then the update. Uh, but the fun fact is that, so if I go now here on the workflow and I want to run that workflow manually, you can see that I can pick which job I want to run specifically and set up a start date or an end date. If I want basically to clean up a pipeline that's fail or there is corrupted data, it's a good practice to always make your data pipeline idempotent so that, so that the same data pipelines run multiple times produce always the same result. There is no side effect. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this project. Again, just one YAML file for to have the runtime and the execution. I can define dependency within jobs. I can define parameterized uh, input to start it, end it, and also which kind of step I want to run if I want to run them individually. And yeah, it works. So what about uh, monitoring? So to be honest, monitoring is one of the weakest point of GitHub Action. And the issue is that you don't have really a clear dashboard that combine all your pipeline's execution. It's per repository. I mean, if you compare that to your data orchestrator, this is much more limited. But here are some workarounds. First, you can put actually all the execution of your data pipeline within one repository. The code doesn't need to be there, but the execution of the workflow can be there. The second is that you can integrate GitHub Action with various tooling for a notification like Slack or whatever have you. And the third one is that so if you go to your GitHub setting on notification and then you go down on system action, you see you have notification for workflow on repository. And I just put set up uh, notify me uh, email failed uh, workflow only. So basically is the workflow fail, I get an email. It's simple and that's enough for me. But anyway, my code is perfect. So I'm never getting spam into my mailbox. Exco, give it to you. Additionally, it's worth to note that GitHub Action integrate really well with VS Code. You can also monitor the status and trigger pipelines from the GitHub CLI tool. So let's talk about the pricing and limits. Well, uh, fun fact is that if your repository is public, everything is free. And if your repository is private, you get 2000 minutes per month, which is already pretty good. So regarding the computes, you get uh, four CPU, 16 uh, gigabyte of RAM and 14 gigabyte of storage if your uh, repository is public and you get 
roughly half that uh, except for storage if your repository is private for a public one that's like already really really decent i think much more than like a typical aws lambda free tier finally two things that you can also upgrade to a larger runner which can go up to 30 gigabyte of ram and in today's day and age if you process daily data more than 30 gigabytes you already get a pretty good stack because i mean you can run multiple uh, project data pipeline right and if you do your incremental load yeah that, that's already plenty enough to to cover and of course you can actually also run your uh, own runners and still use github action but I require a bit more work and that's not really the purpose of that video. One YAML file and done. All right, let's talk a bit about the limits. So one, uh, one limit is that the shortest interval you can define for scheduling is five minutes. If you do batch pipeline anyway, and if you go below five minutes, well, maybe you shouldn't do batch pipeline. And they also mentioned that during high uh, load periods, uh, start of every hour, for example, scheduled jobs might be delayed or even drop i mean this is put there at least for github hosted runner not for yourself uh self-hosted runners but yeah it's uh, just a consideration to take but again if you can just rerun your pipelines to cover one failure and call it down then it should be fine so i hope this video gives you an easy way to build simple data pipelines now get the hell out of here and go build something I really don't know why you're still there, but only 20% of people stay up to the end. So be proud and let me know in the comment if you're in that 20%.